Well, oh, sorry, I wasn't looking at the camera, I was looking at myself. It's all right. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. so handsome. <laughs> no, I was like, I am looking in the totally wrong direction. It just caught me off guard. Right, all right. Welcome back to another episode of Red Tinted Glasses, and we are here to review the first ever Josh Walker Derby as Aberdeen's first ever meeting with Edinburgh City ended in a rather comfortable 3-0 win for the Dons. A professional job, to quote Stephen Glass, as Aberdeen racked up a whopping 32 shots on goal as the Dons comfortably progressed to the next round of the Scottish Cup. Callum, was the game and scoreline as comfortable as it suggested? Certainly, if anything, um, the scoreline almost flatters Edinburgh. That's no disrespect to Edinburgh City. Um, they, it was always going to be a very, very tough task, especially given the, you know, the starting 11 we put out and the way we started the game. Um, but no, very, very comfortable. Probably could have had another two or three and should have had another two or three more. Um, but no complaints from me. I might just sing for 45 minutes. We've got a diamond, Stephen Glass, because an ode to the Red Shed, who I really do admire their commitment to keep that going um, for the whole second half. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it in the South Stand. It was just a nice backing track to the second half, which otherwise was maybe slightly a bit more dull in the first half, but I thoroughly enjoyed it regardless. I think it's quite interesting that most of the talking point after the game seemed to be the the, the vocal support from the Redshed. And, you know, the Redshed's really found its feet uh, over the last couple of games, and it's good to see that backing develop over 45 minutes. Uh, continuous, uh, mm-hmm. as you said there, and I suppose when a game is maybe dying down and dull, it's good that the fans keep going and it's not just dying in the stands as well as, as on the pitch. But you, you said there um, in your kind of brief sum, summarization of the game that you were maybe surprised at the, the starting 11 that Aberdeen announced, and mm-hmm. as was I, to be honest, as Aberdeen named an unchanged 11 from the side that drew one all with Rangers in midweek, possibly showing the intent Aberdeen had to... Um, go out and win this tie comfortably but also the respect that the tie deserved after previous mistakes were made uh, in the League Cup Gary Naismith also adding his surprise at full time and um, that he certainly didn't expect Aberdeen to name such a strong 11 but Callum Aberdeen's decision to do that certainly paid off in abundance 100% I had maybe expected Stephen Glass to rest a couple of you know maybe Scott Brown in a game like that um, for his legs but it was it was encouraging it was good to see he's learned from his mistakes um, I suppose I you could say in terms of the, you know, the team he played against Wraith and the outcome in that game um, so it was good to see and it definitely paid dividends they saw it straight from the off we were up and at them and uh, just didn't give any, any suffocated any chance that Edinburgh City really had uh, to cause an upset, which is what you want to see in games like that. They're taking it seriously, and you know, long may that continue. And hopefully, that's the start of a good Scottish Cup run. Um, we'd be very happy uh, if we just kept plugging away with that, especially in the next round. Obviously, given the tie we've got, mm-hmm. but um, no, I was very, I was happy. I was very very happy with the way they came out from the off and just looked to get the job done. Very professional, and then um, we did so thankfully. We did so, and it's a lot better than the last time Stephen Glass managed a Scottish Cup tie at Tawdry, of course, last season, his first game in charge, which also ended 3-0, but that was to the visitors and a a rather worrying start. Um, So Stephen Glass, I'm sure, will be delighted to be on the right side of the scoreline. And as you said, um, Callum taking another step on the the road to Hamden. And it was a, a bright start from Aberdeen on the front foot, constant chances coming, raining down on the, on the citizens' goal. But the pressure, maybe deadlock, finally broken on 22 minutes as good build-up play from Funzo Ojo saw his shot well saved. And Johnny Hayes showing uh, brilliant alertness to follow in the shot. And instead of, you know, maybe being greedy and taking a shot on himself, he showed good awareness to find Ryan Hedges with a cutback. And, you know, it was an easy job for the Welshman to to give Aberdeen the lead. On his right foot as well. It was yeah. very astounding. But no, it was, it, yeah, it was good to see. It was good to see also the confidence from Fruit Sawojo, obviously his lower league opposition. But it's something we really like to see him uh, a little bit a little bit more of the confidence in the final thirds. It was good to see him sort of take that on. As you say, Johnny Hayes showing that comp- composure to pick him out. And Ryan Hedges, despite all the rumours around him, obviously, uh, still sticking to the task and, and put it away on his right foot, which I think it was the last two goals on both on his right foot now, which is it's astounding, it really is. 
showing his versatility to any mm-hmm. potential suitors, I suppose. But another player who, as you said, okay, it's lower league opposition, but who seemed to stand out from from what I've caught, caught of the game was Funzo Ojo, heavily involved um, in the, in the build up for the second. Hit the post with a, an excellent volley outside of the post uh, in the first half, and had some excellent work, quick feet and trickery to set up J. Emmanuel Thomas in the second half, which we'll come on to um, later on. But it, overall, whether or not you want to describe it as finding his level or maybe just rising to the occasion and, and impressing in general, but. A good performance from the Belgian and named man of the match by Andy Constein uh, on Red TV commentary. Certainly, and well, you know, you maybe argue there's a couple of others out there that perhaps performed pretty well. There's, he performed very, very well, and it was a professional job from him. And it was just good to see. I just, I, I think he's a very likable man, Funso Ojo. I mean, watched his um, post match interview, and also uh, you mentioned Andy Constein. I was, was delighted to look up. Um, only, only at half time I realised that Andy Constein was pretty much directly above me doing the red TV which was it was nice to see him uh, in the flesh after it had been so long and hopefully it's not too long before we see him on the pitch not in the gantry but on Funzo Ojo it came out after the game that Stephen Glass and Funzo King Ojo are going to be discussing the potential for a new contract for the Belgian who's shown his versatility this season both in midfield and uh, right back um, seems to sometimes have been deployed as a winger as well and mm-hmm. um, certainly in those early European games that we played Calum what's your initial thoughts on Funzo Ojo and the thought of him potentially uh, signing a new deal at Aberdeen I mean look, I don't think he's going to be a guy that's going to take us to sort of the next level uh, necessarily mm-hmm. but in terms of given how he's applied himself and no matter what role um, this season and the performances he's put in at times as well uh, being used pretty much all over the park I don't think we can begrudge him that another deal I think it's a very useful player to have in the squad um, particularly, particularly if you're going to probably trim the squad down slightly and well, certainly in terms of centre mids he's a useful guy to have in there because he can mm-hmm. sort of do a job at times um, when needed in other areas so I, I can't begrudge him and he seems like a very likeable man he seems to genuinely get it and he he seems to be enjoying his football as well, um, which, you know, given the way things had gone in his early Pataudry career, you probably wouldn't have expected. Um, so I, I think, fair play, I think he deserves it, uh, given how he's applied himself, and I'm happy with it, really. Yeah, I think the point you make from where he was at maybe this point last year when he was getting shipped out to, to Wigan on loan in his Aberdeen career seemed all but over. Um I don't think I would have thought I'd have been sitting here 12 months on speaking of him potentially getting a new contract. And look, you know, the point you make on he's maybe not the player that's going to take us to the next level is possibly justified. But the point I made on, on Twitter last night was we're not exactly a, a team that is blessed with the greatest depth in, in our squad. Mm-hmm. Um you look at what we've been doing at centre back at times this season. We've had Ross McCrory and Scott Brown filling in mm-hmm. uh, there. So to have someone that can fill in at centre back who's got the ability, maybe for if there's an injury during a game and you know we're out of subs or there's one sub needed and we need someone that can you know fill in a, a, a space, he's a, a substitute potentially that covers more than one position. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a point that was also made to me last night as well is Funzo Ojo worth signing a new contract on for you know given he's probably one of the higher wage earners at Pataudry mm. um, would we maybe be best suited going for someone that would take us to the next level but on the other hand is that person that takes us to the next level going to be on similar if not more wages than Funzo Ojo so could maybe that be a, a, a stumbling block or something to consider during the negotiations that maybe we're looking to reduce his wage, whether or not that's acceptable, but, you know, maybe guaranteed game time, you might might accept it, who, who knows, but uh, it's certainly a, a point for consideration, I suppose, for those that maybe have doubts on Funzo's ability, given the, the rumoured high wages he's on. Yeah, I think so. I suppose that is something they'll have to take into consideration, but I'm sure they'll sort of iron out those details. And I mean, with the way Stephen Glass is going right now, I'm happy to trust him or, well, whoever above him sitting down and, and taking control of that, those negotiations. Um, I just I just think he's a very useful player to sort of have in the squad. 
and um, he seems to be very likable. I'm sure he's probably a great guy to have in there in the dressing room too, especially given you know his determination and work rate and um, just how he how he goes about his business no matter where he is um, on the park. So I don't I put it this way, I don't think we're going to miss out on big targets because we've offered Funtu Mojo a new contract. I think that would be quite unlikely. Yeah, and I also agree, you know, I think we also know what we're getting for, from mm-hmm. Funzo Joe, the, the point you made about the fact he pretty much gives 100% every time he pulls on that shirt, he knows what it means, he, as you, as you said, you know, he understands, he gets it, mm-hmm. you know, uh, almost being the, the term, you know, what it was type, type thing, uh, and fans like respond to that passion and determination on the pitch as well. Um, but interesting, I suppose, you know, there's really been kind of all quiet on the Western front on the, the transfer mm-hmm. market until late uh, Saturday night. We're recording this Sunday evening. And it was Saturday night that Bologna had been rumoured to make the first bid for Calvin Ramsey. Um, so uh, bidding war can now commence with a starting bid at 3.5 million is the rumoured uh, amount the Italian Serie A side have lodged for Calvin Ramsey. Do you think now we will see bids flying in left, right and centre for young Calvin? Or will this test Aberdeen's resolve? Uh, I think that's possibly what Bologna are trying to do with this offer. I think they know it, we know it. Basically everyone knows that we can definitely get more for that. Especially, obviously, there's different circumstances with what Nathan Patterson's gone for. But for mm-hmm. if Ramsey was to go for less than a quarter of that, it would just be totally ridiculous. And we're in a strong position, I suppose. Um, well, having in fact, we haven't been said that apparently we're not in a position where we need to sell uh, yeah. right now. In terms of what I would probably take for Calvin Ramsey, I would like to take for Calvin Ramsey. It would be at, probably at least double that, especially with the fee for Patterson. Um, and also as well, if it was in January, keeping to the end of the season, a loan back to the end of the season, and. I think it's very important, regardless of what you get in the initial transfer fee, needs to be add-ons with clauses um, for like mm-hmm. cap, Scotland caps and certainly a sell-on clause as well, because he could go to the top easily. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's got to be the right contract that benefits Aberdeen in the, in the long term as well. And it's certainly going to be an interesting eight days Obviously, as I said we're recording this on Sunday. It'll be seven days for those of you tuning in tomorrow when the, mm. the uh, episode is released for, for Aberdeen on that transfer market. And Callum, probably the next time uh, we record after a weekend fixture, the, the second, maybe the match preview segment is going to be a, a total shambles for Ross County, given w- what we don't know what might happen on transfer deadline day. Mm-hmm. But back to um, cut matters at Tawdry, Aberdeen managed to double their lead before half time. Foon's Ojo, as we said, again involved with a wonderful one two with Ryan Hedges, uh, a beautiful ball over the top, saw the Welshman run on. And again, another excellent cutback, this time to the American number nine, Christian Ramirez. Mm-hmm. Not, not afraid to get in on the act once again, sc- now scoring on not only his league debut, his UEFA Cup uh, competition debut, but now his Scottish Cup debut as well. You cannot but love that man. I know, and it seemed as if he loved that. It was an emphatic finish, and then he proceeded to boot it back into the net uh, once again. So it was good to see him get in amongst the action. Obviously, again, slightly lower quality, but regardless, a goal like that, no matter who it's against for your striker, does them a world of good and confidence, and hopefully we can see him uh, carry that on into the next game against St Mirren. Um, Again, also Ryan Hedges. I'm pretty sure the cutback was on his right foot, so... I mean, who who is this man, or what has he done? He's try, he's, he is, really is trying to show Blackburn Rovers that um, he does have a right foot. But uh, it was a very very well taken goal, and it was important, I feel, to get that in um, before the second half, uh, before the halftime whistle. Sorry, uh, just ease their nerves in a little bit and sort of you know put Edinburgh City in their place slightly. I guess you could say. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that because, you, you know, these games when you go in 1-0 up, yes, you probably feel comfortable, but games are never comfortable at 1-0. It just takes one chance for a team to, to score a goal, even though we only limit, limited Edinburgh to, to two opportunities uh, on goal through the, through the whole 90 minutes. But on that point on Christian Ramirez, the confidence, I think what goes unnoticed, unnoticed sorry, a lot of the time for Christian is his work rate of mm. the ball. He put in a superb shift on Tuesday night. We spoke about the ball he put into the box that Conor McLennan couldn't get on the end of and probably wishing he was on the end of the ball himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 
he's now had that confidence. He's found the back of the net going into the game, which we're coming up to uh, preview for Tuesday night against St Mirren, an opposition he's found the back of the net in, in both meetings with the Paisley side already this season. So really on that front, excellent for his confidence and hopefully Aberdeen going into that league matters again on Tuesday night. Yeah, absolutely. He, it looked like he uh, he really, really enjoyed it. And hopefully, you know, he can carry that on going into uh, the, the game against St. Men. Obviously, a step up in quality um, in terms of opposition. Um, St. Men obviously themselves got through in the Scottish Cup too against the United. Mm-hmm. But it's encouraging. Regardless, as I said, regardless who it's against, strikers love scoring goals and it will do them the world of good. Um, so you know happy for him he seems to be loving life here he loved that goal he loves Maggie's grill what's, what's not to love about Christian Ramirez yeah his Instagram content continuing to oh, fantastic. delight the, the, Aberdeen, the Aberdeen public but what maybe didn't delight many there was the second half um, a few updates that I was getting was it was a, a, a very boring second half uh, apart from being in the red shed and the entertainment that they provided mm-hmm. um, however I suppose in cup competitions against lower leagues, it's not about, you know, well, maybe for some, uh, I should say, it's maybe about scoring as many as you can. But from an Aberdeen point of view, look, it's job done, no injuries as well. I think mm-hmm. given the, the amount of fixtures coming up as well, that's a, that's a huge boost. But we saw the game out. Um, but I suppose the second half will be remembered for a couple of things. Mm-hmm. The bar being struck twice and Connor Barron coming on at halftime for his Aberdeen debut. How impressed were you or how did you feel Connor got on uh, in the 45 minutes he played yesterday, Callum? Um, I think it was tough for him coming into that game given you know the way Edinburgh City were then set up in that second half. I uh, mentioned Ramirez has worked great. Um, their poor number nine, chasing on every loose ball with absolutely no service. So uh, thoughts go out to him. But in terms of Connor Barron, he looked confident. He looks like he wanted to get on the ball, make things happen when he could. And also, you know, sometimes you see inexperienced players when they're in that sort of game, thrown into that sort of game, they'll just try and do everything, sort of try and take on so many players and they'll just end up running into uh, several of them and losing the ball. Whereas him, he was... If that wasn't on, he was looking to sort of recycle the play. Um, and he looked bright. He looked really, really bright and confident, which is exactly what to see in a young player like that. And uh, I look forward to seeing uh, more of him this season. Uh, I presume, you know, he won't, he probably, he's not going to likely um, throw out, you know, Lewis Ferguson, Scott Brown, or whoever in the middle of the park. But if he can come on and, you know, play these roles and perhaps ease the, ease the pressure on the likes of sort of Teddy Jenks or whoever in support of Ramirez. Um, it's very, very encouraging. And obviously, it's even better that he's, he's come through the youth system. And um, I'm sure you'll go on to, um, you know, more than bit part roles against Edinburgh City. But <laughs> you, saw, you certainly saw the reasons why sort of Kelly, fans were dis- Kelly fans were disappointed to lose him and why uh, he's held in such high esteem at Pathology. Yeah, um, I don't know why, and this is going to sound way big-headed. Um, maybe put a bit of pressure on him, but oh, no. the, the way you were you were speaking there, the, the kind of intent, looking to play forward passes, and if that wasn't on, recycle the ball, look backwards, and keep the ball, the, the game moving. Uh, the per- first person that popped in my head was Billy Gilmore, and the way he kind of does that for for Scotland. Not that I'm comparing the two, but uh, it just kind of sounded similar. But congratulations to, to Connor on on your debut. You said it's a, a dream come true. You've dreamt of playing at Pataudry. Callum, both of us have. Well, you've played at Pataudry, uh, wow. albeit not for Aberdeen. But both of us would have definitely dreamt of playing for the Dons and Connor's gone in and fulfilled his dream. So congratulations mm-hmm. to you, Connor. And as, as Callum says, I'm sure it won't be just bit part appearances we'll be seeing in the future. So good luck to you. But and Callum, sorry, I was like to mention, at least he played part in a 3-0 win, not a 3-0 loss like me. So that was all. That was all. Yeah. <laughs> and at least he actually, as you said, won the game and, and did good involvement as my appearance of Tawdry was also rather embarrassing. Got my studs caught as I tried to run from the halfway line to, to score and tried to chip the keeper and pretty much was a pass back into his hands. So Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Swift play on. Uh, Lewis Ferguson crashed a thunderous free kick off the bar from 30 yards out an audacious effort from the midfielder. But... The talking point from the second half is J. Emmanuel Thomas, his introduction. And after good build-up play from both Conor Barron and Funzo Ojo combining, set up J. Emmanuel Thomas, whose effort, I mean, somehow 
crashed off the bar and bounced out. It just looks so ungainly when you watch it back. It was such nice build-up play from Conor Barron and <laughs> Fudso Wojo. Uh, put on a plate, and I mean, I don't think anyone expected anything other than uh, this sort of him to hit the back of the net. I almost enjoyed the fact he hit the bar more than I would have a goal, um, given the way the second half had sort of gone. Uh, at times, you know, maybe we could have upped the tempo, but when they're sitting in so much, it's it's, it's difficult regardless of who the opposition is. Um, it was bizarre and I still enjoyed it. Good comedy value, let a great laugh and... Um, Thank you, Joe, J. Manuel Thomas, for that. But it also sort of highlights our need for probably another striker uh, to come mm-hmm. in because if Christian Ramirez, something happens to him, even suspension rather than injury, um, not confident in J. Manuel Thomas's ability to fire us towards the European spots or a Scottish Cup. No, well, especially if Marley Watkins is out till the split, um, as has been rumoured online. Um, we definitely need some attacking intent, although I did see Michael Ruth has been recalled from his loan spell at uh, Falkirk. Although, again, it's a lot of pressure to put on, on young shoulders for the remainder of the season. So it'll be interesting, again, over the course of the next week to see what Aberdeen do on the attacking front in the, in the transfer window. But on that, in terms of minutes for players, um, comes it may be a surprise that we only made the three substitutions as we touched on Connor Barron getting 45 minutes for, for Ross McCrory and Declan Gallagher got himself half an hour coming off uh, on the mm-hmm. pitch for, for Ryan Hedges and Christian Ramirez getting a brief rest by um, setting out the last 15 minutes uh, you know I was surprised not to see the likes of Lewis Ferguson, maybe Scott Mm. Brown coming off. You know, we touched on in our last episode, it's eight games coming up in 25 days. It's a busy time for the players, but, you know, when I was writing this down about, I can't believe we haven't rested more players, was Stephen Glass maybe thinking, look, the players have had a few weeks off. We need to actually get a bit more minutes into the legs, get them maybe back up to fitness ahead of this busy, busy period. Quite possibly. Um, one thing I wasn't actually sure of going into that, that game was how many substitutes we were actually allowed. Uh, mm-hmm. Whether Because obviously now it's five in the league and I wasn't sure about the Scottish Cup. Do you have any clue? Because I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure in the preview I said five, so I'm going to stick by five and hope okay. I'm right. <laughs> so you could be wrong, but at least you're sticking to your guns. Uh, yeah. Don't back down, double down. Fair play. Yeah. Like that. Um, yeah, I, I was, I think McCrory did have, he was sort of limping sort of five minutes mm-hmm. before the second, uh, before the half time. So that's probably why he came off. It's a little bit of precaution. Um, there's certainly in Stephen Glass's post match interview, it doesn't sound like uh, anything too serious. We're just waiting to sort of find out how he is today, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly, Scott Brown was maybe one I expected to uh, get some sort of rest, mm-hmm. um, especially when you know he ended up playing centre half for a little bit for, of the start of the second half. You would have thought maybe yeah. Gallagher could come on in that position, but um, regardless, I think you look at the players we did rest, they are sort of key players for us. Um, but you know maybe you are looking towards Lewis Ferguson who ne- barely ever seems to miss a game and I don't know how because yeah. he's been it's been that way for about three years um, but on him actually it has to be said even though it was Edinburgh City he does seem since sort of the Dun- Dundee game maybe around that sort of time he does seem to have stepped up his game a little bit and realised mm-hmm. you know a lot of the onus is on him and not only that but he has the ability to sort of do make things happen for us so um you know, I'm glad to see that. Just unfortunate that that free kick uh, didn't go in because it was bloody brilliant. Why is he not doing that against Premiership teams? That would be fantastic. But he got the goal in the end, obviously. He did. He got the goal his second of the week. This time a header as he rounded off the day's scoring. And um, as I said, with that header to, to finish the scoring 3 0, saw the Dons progress to the next round, Calm. No, no injuries, no concerns, and safely in through to the next round where Aberdeen were drawn away from home mm-hmm. to face the Steel Minutes, a trip to Fir Park on the 12th of February. What was your initial thoughts on that cup draw? Given some other teams in it, uh, would have liked to avoid sort of any premiership opposition, especially mm-hmm. given the way the games have gone against Motherwell. 
generally <laughs> generally pretty good performances but still not being able to beat them which is a bit of a concern but hopefully you know we may be able to use that as fuel and go and rectify things down there uh, it's a tie that still pretty confident uh about if you know well I expect them given we put our best team out against Denver City we'll go and do the same uh, against Motherwell obviously Motherwell will see this game obviously has a chance to um, get through against us given their perform uh, their results against uh, the Dons but you know uh, still got reason to be confident to get into that next round and while it's not favourable it should be a good day out as well regardless going down there yeah, aside of um, we've not beaten, let alone scored against this season, so definitely not the the draw many would have wanted. Um, but I suppose you said it might be a good day out. Uh, obviously, the BBC, I was going to say Premier Sports, but let's be honest, we know which two clubs they'll be showing mm. uh, in their TV ties. So hopefully, the BBC don't uh, shaft us with a lunchtime kickoff mm. uh, or a Thursday night kickoff like they did with it. the Hibs Cove game in in the previous rounds. So will be interesting because I do think. I think we'll see probably our growth in Hibs selected for TV. Um, and I really feel, unless they fancy St Mirren and Kelty, um, the, the cause of an upset, I think we'll find ourselves on TV. But it does mean that Aberdeen do face back-to-back trips to Fir Park in February. So hopefully, you know, both clubs can arrange some sensible pricing on that cup tie. If not, a, a package deal. We tweeted it out on our Twitter page at RTG underscore podcast that it'd be great to see both clubs coming together and organising sensible pricing, if not a package deal for the game uh, to incorporate both cup and league game coming up because look, football is for fans and for Aberdeen fans, February Calm is shaping up to be an expensive month with four away games in the space of 18 days. Uh, not only will it be expensive for our fans, but it's going to be tough for the players being on the road that much as well. Yeah, certainly. And um, I suppose this is this is sort of a make or break month for our season, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, if all comes comes well, and we come through, well, unlikely unscathed, I suppose. Uh, but yeah. We're bound to drop points at some stage. But if we come back um, in and having you know performed well in the league, improved our league position, and still in the Scottish Cup at the back end of this month, uh, I'm sure despite, you know, the travelling that Aberdeen fans will have to do and the expenditure, they will not be complaining one bit. And uh, shipping up, because it looks like it's an exciting month. I think uh, it'll be interesting to see off the back of the end of the January transfer window as well, uh, mm-hmm. how things are looking. But I would describe it almost as make or break for the season. Yeah, um, I think actually it's a, it's a really good analogy to use season defining, make or break, uh, a few weeks coming up. Um because let's be honest, these should be winnable games coming up mm-hmm. for Aberdeen. I know we've probably cursed it, both of us, by calling them winnable games and saying yeah. that we're going to come through this run, hopefully unscathed. But it is a trip to Paisley that awaits Aberdeen tomorrow night, uh, as I'm just preempting the, all of you listening to this on Monday. And it is, as I said, a trip to Paisley. And the uh, buddies have come into this game, I suppose, on a bit of an upturn in form. Mm -hmm. It was 11 games without a win, but it's now back-to-back wins. As you said, Callum St Mirren following up that 2-1 win at Tannadice with a 2-0 win over Air United, Craig Kilty and Kyle McAllister with the goals at Somerset Park, seeing the buddies through. Like the game at Tannadice, Jamie McGrath didn't play, so maybe that's something, again, I expect he will not feature against the Dons as he looks to uh, seal his move away from St Mirren. Calm, hopefully though, we see a repeat performance levels that Aberdeen put in against St Mirren when they visited Petodrin. We kind of blew them away in that first half. That would be that would be pleasing if we could t- uh, turn in another type of display on Tuesday night. Certainly, that would be very much welcome. Uh, come out all guns blazing and hopefully we'll, we'll get the job done. Um, maybe Terry Jenks looked to rectify his red card uh, early in the season down there that would be good uh, if he could pop up for another goal uh, on Jamie McGrath there it would be very bizarre if he came in to play against Aberdeen given the fact we've been linked with him but made an offer probably um, mm. at some point and then taken it off the table but you know I guess maybe he'd have, a, he'd have a point to prove and it has to be said I respect Jim Goodwin not having him involved uh, if mm-hmm. his head's not there he shouldn't be involved really because he's not going to give his all for the team especially with an eye uh, looking elsewhere but it'll be an interesting one. It's an important game for us to follow up that game against Edinburgh City. And obviously, 
a good point against Rangers in the league. We need to win this one and uh, put things right from our troubles in Paisley earlier in the season too. Yeah, absolutely. And both times the teams have met this season, both games have produced five goals. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it could be another five goal thriller on Tuesday night. And, you know, Teddy Jenks, you said, maybe looking to, to right his wrongs from his last trip to Paisley, but got uh, a good performance when St Mirren came to town, mm-hmm. grabbing an assist in that game. And, you know, maybe we'll see him again pushed in that forward role like we've seen uh, in the last two games, uh, obviously with Marley Watkins out. St Mirren, however, have had their troubles at home. Home has definitely not mm-hmm. been where the heart is for the Buddies. It's been four straight draws for them. In fact, six in total at home this season, and they've only won once at home. As Callum alluded to, we all know who that's against. But Callum, our away form has not exactly been impeccable this season, and not really anything to, to write home about, if at all. But this would be the perfect time to kind of stamp a bit of authority on that away form, put in a good performance, pick up three valuable points. Uh, as you said, you know, it's coming up to a make or break few weeks, few uh, big games coming up thick and fast, of course. Another good performance, because let's be honest, I'd probably expect us to name the same starting eleven again uh, on Tuesday night as we have done in our last two games. Yeah, certainly. And also a good chance for us to put a little bit of distance between us and uh, some of the bottom six clubs and hopefully uh, mm-hmm. continue to push on into the top six towards the European spots. And I, mean, I would certainly expect the same starting eleven to go out there, providing McCrory is OK. And um, feeling that Declan Gallagher will probably just come straight in now that he's uh, got some, he seems fit and he's got some minutes under his belt. Belt? I don't know why he's wearing multiple belts. That's a bit of a concern. <laughs> But um, yeah, that's that'd be the, probably the only change I would expect. Not too much rotation, probably required too much. Um, obviously, you know they've, they just came through the game against Edinburgh City and Dundee United, uh, Dundee United Rangers. I'm all over the shop here. <laughs> um, but that game against Edinburgh City, whilst you know two games in quick succession, uh, can be tough. Probably in terms of building the fitness was probably very good for them, and mm. you know. They didn't, maybe didn't exert themselves um, as much as you know. Perhaps you, you might think, given the fact that lower league opposition on the ball a lot rather than chasing uh, loose balls constantly. Uh, I'm sure Henry City feeling things a little bit worse than we were. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But we're certainly looking forward to the game. And last week we caught up with former Aberdeen defender and St Mirren defender Lee Mayer as part of an interview that will be released later on this month once the fixture uh, congestion has calmed down. So stay tuned, subscribe, whether you're listening or watching on YouTube to get notified of when that full interview is released. But we caught with Lee to hear his thoughts, not only on the game on Tuesday, but both Aberdeen and St Mirren so far this season. Uh, Of course, Aberdeen game against St Mirren uh, coming up. What are your thoughts on going into that game, essentially, with this, where the two sides are right now? Uh, obviously, this season, um, St Mirren has beat us uh, down there. Uh, just thoughts so, sort of where the two clubs are at just now and uh, how you maybe see, uh, see that game going? I think both are similar. They're ready to go and kick on. St Mirren, obviously, just on the back of a, a bad run of games. Mm. And obviously, won the other night, which is, is, good to, is good to relieve a little bit of pressure. But... They'll want to go and kick on. And Aberdeen, I feel they've never they've not really got going this season. I think the, the performance the other night against Rangers is a great platform platform for them to go and kick on from. But I've I've said it all the time, it's easy to go and lift your game against Rangers and Selic. Mm-hmm. The tough games are St. Johnson away, Motherwell away, um, St. Mirren at home. These are the games that you need to go and show up because people come into Pataudry and people playing Aberdeen. They raise their game because it's Aberdeen and, it, and it, it is, it's a fact, right? So you need to be at that top level all the time but um, because because other teams are going to come here and they're going to raise a game and they're maybe going to sit in and you've got to be more creative to, to cut them open. But looking back on Aberdeen season, I think, um, I'm glad Stephen Glass got the time because I think there was a lot of fans wanting want him to go but it would have been ridiculous if, if they'd got... So fair play to the chairman and the board for sticking by their decision. And um, because it's easy for, for board members to just to d- divert the pressure away from themselves to just, okay, let's keep the fans happy. But um, I'm, I'm glad that they, they kept with them and they showed good faith in them. They gave them money and he's, he's invested well in, in the squad. And hopefully you're starting to see them gel now. I think, 
I think they can go on a run and go and potentially, hopefully, can go and add one or two players this week, so they can go and get up to third place this season and then solidify that, and then hopefully kick on again next season. But St Mirren under big pressure because a couple of defeats and they can be right back down there again. I can see St Johnston picking up, and um, God knows when it'll be. He'll need to start picking up soon, but they they've had a bad a bad kick start to the season. But St Mirren need to be away from that and. Uh, but St Mirren, have, I've watched St Mirren quite a few. I've done quite a bit for St Mirren TV this this season, and they've actually played very well a lot of games, and, mm-hmm. and they've not got the points that they needed. They've had quite a lot of uh, attempts at goal, and so St Mirren will create chances. So Aberdeen obviously need to be be very wary of that. But I just think Aberdeen will be too strong for them, um, because I can, I can see Aberdeen going on a good run now and um, having a, a good end to the season. Hopefully, they can get up to third place. I don't think they're going to get anywhere near Celtic and Rangers. I think the golf, I think the gap in financial gap, everything is just too big. It always has been. People will say, oh, but we need to be competing with them. We need to do this. Yeah, we'd love to, but it's just, it's it's not going to happen for a good few years, I don't think. Um, yeah. And but St Mirren as well. It's, it's going to be an interesting game because I think both are slightly under pressure to go and win it. A draw would just, a draw, a St Mirren will be more happy with a draw than Aberdeen mm-hmm. um, but Aberdeen are wanting to go and kick on now and as I say it's games like this that Aberdeen fans are expecting to go and get three points and, and as I say go on a good run which will build confidence going into the going into the split so yeah. if, if you're asking me for a scoreline I'm going to go for five all okay I'm going to sit on the wow. fence and go for five all <laughs> well we said it's a roller coaster and uh, goals would, would certainly certainly be welcome but so as we're recording this on the Thursday night before the, the Scottish Cup games uh, St Mirren away to air you know potential banana skin um, but I suppose as you alluded to earlier and uh, Lee you know we kind of didn't take the League Cup seriously I think it's fair to say from an Aberdeen point of view uh, and, and paid the ultimate price going out to Wraith Rovers so hopefully no mistakes are, are made this weekend at Tawdry against Edinburgh City but, but for St Mirren you know, they haven't scored a lot of goals this season. Obviously, that was their first win in 11 or 12, I believe, uh, at Tannis. A, a good win. Okay, Dunge United themselves finding themselves in a poor run of form. But also a lot of speculation around Jamie McGrath uh, not going to be coming to Aberdeen anymore. How important for St Mirren do you feel it is for them to keep a hold of Jamie, but also maybe find a goal scorer for the second half of the season? If every team needs a goal scorer. It's... Um... If, if, a, if a team can be well organised and they can go and get someone who's going to get in 15, 16 goals, they'll be right. They'll be up at the top end of the, of the league. They've just signed a young kid. I don't, I don't know him, but supposedly I think he's, he's so he scored 25 goals last season. Don't know what division he's a young guy. I think three hat tricks. So don't know the division he's been in. I don't know how much about him, but he scores goals. So hopefully we'll see we'll see much from him over the next coming weeks. But touching on Wednesday, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Touching on the Jamie McGrath thing, I personally think he's probably played his last game for St Mirren because he wasn't playing last night. Uh, obviously, away to Tannadice, so if if he was fit, he would have been playing. Or so I'm guessing that St Mirren will receive a bid for him before the before this month, before this month's over. But what I did like, and uh, I don't know if many people do, but I like the fact that Stephen Glass said, right, either come to Aberdeen or you're not. Mm-hmm. It's it's a case of look, we want. Uh, the Celtic manager says something similar. He says, I want people that want to be at this football club and see if you're going to use us to maybe go and maybe get a little bit more money from other people and use this and, oh, but Aberdeen want me and that. And No, I want you to be here because you want to play for Aberdeen Football Club. And I thought, that's a mindset that he's, that he's putting out there. And so the people in the dressing room are now thinking, no, we need to be, we're playing for Aberdeen Football Club here because the manager is only bringing people in here that want to be here. So I thought, I thought that was great. And that maybe comes from him having an Aberdeen background as well and have feelings for the club and, and I'm a big believer on employing people like maybe like I see Stuart Duff's involved and Derek Young these guys are involved with taking the next batch of kids through and Barry Robson all people that have got connections to Aberdeen Football Club mm-hmm. and so these kids are going to look at these guys and say right these guys have done what I would want to do I'm going to go and play for Aberdeen Football Club so they're going to look up to them they're going to respect them and but on the other turn, these guys are wanting to give back to Aberdeen Football Club because they're looking after them after their football career. So I think things like that really work well. Um, and I think with Stephen Glass being an ex-player as well, he's got the feeling for the club and he's thinking, no, you either want to be here or you don't want to be here. We're not going to be your third choice when maybe a, a Blackburn deal falls through or something else. It's, if you want to sign for Aberdeen, you sign for Aberdeen now. So I thought fair play on for that. And it's and going forward, only it makes 
I think it makes the whole club stronger. And I think the fans should appreciate that as well and say, well, see what fair play on because he's he's wanting he's wanting players here that the fans are the same because the fans are like, we want you here because you want to play for Aberdeen. And Stephen Glass is just saying the same sort of thing. So I think going forward, I think Stephen Glass has came across well. He handled the pressure very well, which mm-hmm. is tough, especially when he's he's new to manage to to being a football manager. So he's dealt with it well. And yeah. then as I say, hopefully he can go on a run now and get something turn the remainder of fans that are still against him. But um things are looking promising. And then, yeah. yeah, so look look forward to the cup tie. Yeah, and I think we've got, you know, a, a decent run of fixtures again, with all due respect to the opposition. But I suppose like you said, the pressure comes from an Aberdeen point of view that these the games coming up the Aberdeen have got Edinburgh City, St. Mirren, St. Johnson, Ross County before the game against Celtic at home. Games that Aberdeen fans will look at or expect the, the club to be getting three points and, and cup progression in. But we, we've spoken about St Mirren and the importance of them holding on to players or getting a striker. Do you think it's important that Aberdeen hold on to the likes of Calvin Ramsey, Lewis Ferguson and even Ryan Hedges uh, this month or do you maybe see Ryan Hedges departing as well? Well, I think the, wrong, the rumours are strong about Hedges moving on but mm-hmm. I think it's when you look back over the last maybe four or five years the players that Aberdeen have lost Kenny McLean, Ryan Jack um the midfielder went to Dar- Derby. His rumours are going Shinney, sorry, yeah. The centre half that went down south. Scott McKenna. McKenna, mm-hmm. yeah. So I, I know the players have forgotten their names, right? <laughs> so, so when you look at this, right, um, McGinn left. McGinn's came back. I don't think he's been the same since he came back. Mm-hmm. All these players that have left and moved on, that, that's like really, really good players that you're replacing all the time. And unfortunately, and this is the way football is, and it's not just Aberdeen, Silicon Rangers are the same. Aberdeen is like a stepping stone to maybe better things. And if you're replacing players like that all the time, it's always going to be tough. Yeah, that's why I, I, I've got, I take my hat off to Derek McInnes, what he done, because he was replacing midfielders, like top, top midfielders every single, every single season. And it's mm-hmm. tough to do that. But so if you can keep hold of these players and if you can add every transfer window rather than, oh, I need to replace, you're, you're then adding, because what you then want to do is you want to add players that's going to bring quality rather than just quantity. So if you're bringing in better, so if you've got Hedges and you bring in better than Hedges, Hedges then needs to up his game and then you're then raising the bar way up here. So whereas if you lose Hedges and you bring in someone that's not as good, the standard then drops slightly. So Mm -hmm. if you can keep these top players, and it's going to be tough because let's be honest, money talks. And if Mm -hmm. somebody comes in for it with a bid for a million or five million or whatever it is, as a businessman, and we know the chairman is a businessman, he's got to get a look at that and he's because at the end of the day, football clubs are a business. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, the, the books need to balance. So it, it's going to be tough. It will be tough because, but that's what's going to happen. If your team start doing well and your players start performing, clubs are going to come and they're going to start and, and they're going to try and steal them for as cheap as they possibly can. But going back to answer your question, it would be good if they could keep them and maybe add to that because then it adds quality and it then adds people fighting for, uh, fighting for places, which is always a good thing that it's, as I say, we've got what ten days to go till the window closes, so it'll be it'll be a very interesting watch for the next ten days. Yeah, no, perfect. It's been great to hear your thoughts on on the game coming up on Wednesday night. Uh, obviously, we're recording a full interview with yourself. So, for those of you tuning into this little segment, uh, stay tuned for the full interview, uh, looking back at, at Lee's career uh, and his time at Aberdeen, uh, coming out uh, in mid February. Uh, obviously, we've got a, a busy run of games, so. To for to get the full benefit of the interview, stay tuned for, for that one. So that was the thoughts there of former Aberdeen and St Mirren defender Lee Mayer giving us his thoughts on the state of both Aberdeen and St Mirren this, se- this season and for the rest of the season. I hope you enjoyed that. And Callum, let's hope we have some more positivity to talk about when we reconvene with another live this time on Wednesday to review the action from Tuesday night's game. It's bloody all go for us right now, isn't it? But I very much enjoyed uh, having Lee Mayer on. Um, hopefully, those watching or listening at home or wherever you may be uh, will do so too. That will be out, as I mentioned, before the Lee, Lee Mayer clip. Uh, later on this month, once the congestion sort of calms down a bit in terms of fixture schedules, make sure you're subscribed on YouTube and the notifications on so you know exactly when that goes live. You don't want to miss it. It was very, very good uh, talk. Uh, follow Especially us. Okay. to find out the former player he's still in touch with because you will never oh. guess who it is. And actually, 
give think about who the players he's played with and comment down below let you know letting us know who you think it, it will be um also listen uh, follow us wherever you're listening in whether it's spotify uh, apple podcasts regardless where it is and uh, don't forget to get in touch as well uh, leave us our th- uh, your thoughts on sort of going into the St Mirren game uh, at rtg underscore podcast on twitter at rtg dot podcast on instagram thank you very very much for tuning in we hope you did enjoy it and take care <laughs>